Okay, so moving on, more stereoisomer fun. Um, we're going to continue to talk about enantiomers. We're going to talk about stereocenters, and we're going to move into a little bit of diastereomers in this video. And then we'll have kind of defined what everything is, and we can start to uh, apply it to actual problems and questions and that kind of stuff um, coming up soon. So I'm just going to jump right into it. We're going to talk about what happens. This video is about what happens when we have one stereocenter in a molecule or one chirality center, and then also what happens if we have more than one, which is two or more. I'm pretty sure that's how numbers work. Okay, so we'll start with compounds with a single stereocenter. All right, so right now, hopefully, when you see stereocenter, you're comfortable remembering what that definition is, right? Stereocenter is an sp3 carbon with four different groups attached. Your carbon has to have four different groups, so this is important. This is important, and this is one of those things that you think you remember the definition, you think you've got it, and then you come up against something and it it doesn't quite click. So remember that hydrogens can be implied, right? So if you have a carbon that's got three groups attached to it and there's not a fourth group drawn in, sometimes it can be a hydrogen, right? Um, if there's more than one hydrogen, then it can't be a stereocenter because more than one hydrogen means you've got two groups that are the same. Right, and so we'll, we can do an example where that doesn't work. Um, if you have two groups that are the same, when you do the mirror image, you end up with the same structure, right? It's not, a, it's not an enantiomer, it's not a non-superposable mirror image. So if you have more than one group that's the same, it's not a stereocenter, right? It's only when all four groups are different. The other thing is it has to be sp3. So any carbon that is a part of a pi bond any carbon that is a carbocation, any carbon that is double, triple, double bond or triple bond is straight out. It cannot be a stereocenter. It will never be a stereocenter. You don't have to worry about any exceptions for that, right? So if you are looking for stereocenters, you can immediately discount any carbons that are part of a pi bond, have a carbocation on them, or have more than one hydrogen, right? So hopefully you've been getting good at finding all the, uh, at, finding all the hydrogens and knowing where those are because now that's going to be really useful because it's going to really narrow down where can we look for stereocenters. Okay, so compounds with one stereocenter are very straightforward. First of all, they always have an enantiomer. Right, so that's pretty straightforward, right? And so the enantiomer is the mirror image of the compound. Right? That's how we defined what an enantiomer is. Now there's a little trick, so if you don't like drawing mirror images, um, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna do something different than what we did before. I'm gonna do draw two chlorobutane. Right? So there's a stereocenter here. Right? We have a chlorine, a hydrogen, a methyl group, and a two carbon group on the side. So we have four different groups attached to this sp3 carbon. That's our stereocenter. If I want to draw the enantiomer, of this, right? I'm going to go back to the previous uh, video, if I can find it. There it is. And notice that this compound is an enantiomer of our original compound and all I've done is switch what's wedged and what's dashed. I made the methyl group dashed and the hydrogen wedged over here. This compound is the same thing as this compound right here. So this compound is also the enantiomer of that original compound. So if I want to draw the enantiomer of this, I can, you can just switch any two groups, right? I usually just switch the wedged and the dashed groups because those are usually the easy, those are usually the smaller ones and so they're a little bit easier to switch. But this compound now is the enantiomer of this compound, right? So now these two are enantiomers of each other. 
So if you don't like drawing mirror images, you can always just switch what is wedged and what is dashed. And that will always give you the enantiomer when you have a single stereo center on your compound, right? And the reason that works is because you're just kind of switching where you put the mirror, right? So if we can do an example here, if I can find my mouse, there we go. So going back to the hands example, right? If I hold my hands up like this, now the mirror is, well, whatever. If the mirror is like right through the middle of my body and I hold my hands up like this, now this, my left hand is being reflected out to my right hand, right? But we can also do it this way, right? Or this way, I guess. So now the mirror is in between my hands. Or I guess I can do it this way, whatever. The mirror is in between my hands. The reflection is still happening, but notice what's different, right? Is that the thing that's closest to you or pointed out at you is different on this one than it is on this. So we're just changing where the mirror is still works just fine. We're still creating a mirror image, right? This compound is the mirror image of that one. These two are enantiomers of each other. So you can do it either way. Don't do it both ways, right? If you draw the mirror image and then switch two groups, you've made the enantiomer of the enantiomer, which is the mirror image of the mirror image, which is of course just your original compound. Again. So you have to choose one, either draw the mirror image or switch two groups, but don't do both because that will not get you to the right answer. Okay. Okay. But what happens if we have more than one compounds with more than one stereo center? Well, first of all, they almost always have an enantiomer. So there's an exception there. And we'll talk about that exception in a video or two. And we find the, the um, we find the mirror image in this, or excuse me, we find the enantiomer in the same way. We can draw the mirror image, or we switch two groups, whoops, switch two groups at every stereo center. So when you have more than one stereo center, if you want to draw the enantiomer of it, you have to switch to, you have to change every single one of the stereo centers to its mirror image, right? And we've talked about two different ways of doing that. We can draw the mirror image of it, or we can switch any two groups. Either one will work, but um, we need to, uh, when we have more than one stereo center, we have to switch all of them in order to create an enantiomer. So I think an example, is worth doing at this point. Fluorine, bromine. All right, here's our compound. We have two stereo centers here, here, and here, right? And hopefully that's clear to you. If it's not clear to you, go through and look at what are the four different groups. We have two sp3 carbons. These are both sp3 carbons here, right? And each one has four different groups attached to it. Right, so find those four groups. If you're unclear on where those are, um, then definitely come ask that question, okay? So if we wanna draw the enantiomer, right? And I'm gonna do this by the mirror image method. We can, we'll do the other one as well, right? I'm gonna put the mirror, well, I kind of put this in the wrong place, whatever. I'm gonna put the mirror right here. And then when I draw the mirror image of it, like that. these two compounds are different from each other. These are enantiomers of each other. And I think sometimes this is kind of hard to see because these look really, really similar. Right, but remember what we're doing. We need everything in order for it to be uh, the same compound. We would need everything to line up. So if we pick up the compound, the the enantiomer that we drew, and put it on top of this one, the bromine and the chlorine are in the wrong places. Right, all the carbons line up just fine. The bromines and the chlorines are in the wrong places. If you flip it over so that the bromine is on this side and the chlorines on this side, 
that works just fine, except that then your bromine is going back into the screen and your chlorine is going back into the screen. And so they will not line up with where these are here. I think this one is kind of the hardest ones to see. The or the multiple stereocenters ones are really hard to see. If you do have a model kit, this is where building a model kit, building a model of the structure and then building its enantiomer is really helpful because you can see no matter what I do, I can't lay these on top of each other and have everything line up. So um, I'm sure this is something that we'll talk about a fair amount in our Tuesday and Thursday meetings. But um, yeah, if this isn't making sense, please bring questions. Please uh, sign up for office hours and such for that because this is not especially through a screen. I feel like this is a, one of those concepts that you almost have to kind of see it as you do it to really make it work. So um, I might do some model videos here in a minute. But um, the enantiomers, these are enantiomers. The other thing we can do, so this is the mirror image. Oh, I don't want my eraser. This is the mirror image method, but we can also swap groups, right? Swap groups method. So if I take this one and I just switch what's wedged and what's dashed, the chlorine is now dashed and the bromine is now dashed, right? And I have to do it on both, right? So swap groups on both stereocenters. So notice that I have not drawn in the hydrogen, but there is a hydrogen that's implied on both of these carbons because we know that there is a hydrogen there because carbon always has four bonds. And we know that it has to be dashed because that's the only position left. Steric repulsion tells us that there will always be one wedged group and one dashed group. And since we haven't drawn in the dashed group and hydrogen is the only group left, we know that it has to be dashed on our original structure. So then when we flip it, now we got hydrogen going forward, right? So these two are enantiomers, right? We've switched the groups on both stereocenters. We've created a new compound. These two compounds here, this one and this one, are the same, right? They are identical. You can pick up either one of these, flip it over 180, and put it on top of the other one, and they will line up exactly, right? So these are the same compound. There's only one enantiomer of this compound. It's the mirror image. It's just that we can get there a couple of different ways. All right. The last thing that we can do with compounds with multiple stereocenters is, of course, what happens if we only switch if we only switch groups at one stereocenter. So we have our original compound here that's got two stereocenters. Bromine. Going. I'm going to switch the two groups at, or I'm going to switch two groups at the chlorine stereocenter, but I'm going to leave the bromine stereocenter alone. All right, so what's the relationship between these two compounds? They are not the same. You can't pick the one up on the right and put it on top of the one on the left and have everything line up, right? There's no way that that can happen. So they're definitely not identical. They're not enantiomers because they're not mirror images of each other. We already know what the mirror image of this compound looks like, and it doesn't look like what we just drew. So these are stereoisomers, right? They're different based on how they're oriented in space that are not enantiomers, right? They are not mirror images of each other. And we already have a term for that, right? From the first video in stereochemistry, these are diastereomers. Right? So diastereomers happen when we switch only one group on a compound that has multiple stereocenters. Right? This video is already getting very long, so I'm gonna pause there. We obviously have more work to do with diastereomers. That's just one example. We'll look at some other examples. We'll do some uh, stereochemistry kind of examples and stuff in a future video. And hopefully that will kind of solidify all of these definitions that I've just kind of thrown at you over the last two videos.
All right, so hang in there. Uh, watch more videos. It'll all start to make sense, I promise.